Right? And so here it's a lot less intimidating to serve in volley. If I serve, and even if I get to here, I have a good chance of making a first volley. And so we can practice specific things like that in a more closed environment. We can practice just the timing of coming up and doing a little split step at the right moment. As a player, the sooner they can develop control, uh, the greater the chance they have of falling in love with the sport. Um, I think tennis has a higher dropout rate than a lot of other sports because it's hard to get to that stage where you develop control and you're able to rally with your peers. Um, think about it. If we're, if we're giving a lesson and the pro is feeding the ball and the kid's hitting the ball over the net, but they're not at the stage yet where they're able to rally with their peers. They're not really playing the full game, and so they don't really have that same success they might feel of making a basketball into the hoop. Steve has to get this first ball, and you guys have to touch the net, and then you have to let the first ball bounce. Ready, Steve? Now you're on the court with him. You're a doubles team with Steve. Play it if it's close. Nice. Let's try to get eight to a court plus two pros coming out here and feeding this game. How many of you guys have had a player that looks like looks like a 4.0 when they hit the ball, but they can't win matches at the 3.0 level all the time, right? And so I think that that player has just been taught one way to swing, and unfortunately they can't adapt to the situation they're in because maybe they skip the control maybe they skip the control stage. So they're always trying to hit their pro forehand with top spin no matter what when if they could simply just play a little bit of defense, they'd be able to win matches at the 3.0 level. I've seen a lot of the time a junior player play on a ball that's a, a court that's a little bit too big with a ball that's bouncing too high. Maybe they haven't learned yet how to move up and take the ball on the rise or move back and let it fall into their strike zone. And so their grip ends up rotating. As a result, they end up with a full Western grip, which was not intentional and not within the, the parameters that... Um, we're trying to teach um, the higher level players don't want to play with the lower level ones. Here, with the absence of the overhand serve and the ability to just kind of rip a ground stroke winner, the lower level players can hang in there better with the higher level ones. In spec, if you can develop a well-rounded game and get to the net and close out points, you might be able to translate that to tennis and not actually have to run that much in tennis singles. So for those players that we kind of on the fence, we want them to try singles because we think they they can do it, they don't just have to limit themselves to doubles. I think this can be a great training tool. So you can see everybody's very active. We got a lot of people on the court. Um, even though there's maybe eight or six in some situations, you don't feel like you're resting that long and you're running like crazy. Guys are making guests that you wouldn't dream of in tennis. I was at a club in Tiburon and during primetime hours between 9 and 11 a.m. during the week, you'd only have two pros teaching at once. You had to save room for league matches and members playing. Now, if we were teaching spec or teaching a clinic or a lesson, we could fit eight pros on those two courts now. With junior clinics, we all have those clinics where the kids aren't quite high performance. Maybe they don't have control. They can't quite rally with their peers, so they often goof off. Maybe they fail on purpose. Maybe they're just not that engaged. We spend a lot of the clinic trying to make sure it's very fun for the kids because I think that's, that's the first thing. If the kids aren't having fun, how are they going to improve? How are they going to want to play tennis? stay in the sport. So we, we spend most of the time just making sure it's as fun as possible. But had it been this instead, who knows? They might have had more success. They might have been able to rally a little bit better. They're more engaged because they're having more fun and then their improvement just shoots up. You can stand wherever you want in the court. The receiver has to let the ball bounce just like you would in tennis. He can't, he can't volley my serve back. So my partner might be at the net. I might decide to serve and volley if I... Ah, so they should have got that, but they just weren't in position, right? That shouldn't be a winner.